Okay, so when you guys get into Canvas, you're gonna see that there is the assignment Tuesday 316 Newzella. And you're, we're gonna have two Newzellas in here. One is on Westford Expansion and Manifest Destiny. So the same stuff that we were talking about yesterday. And the other one is going to be on the Transcontinental Railroad into a new window. So if once you get in there, you guys are gonna click on this load button, it'll load up the Cami assignment. And we've got our two new zealous in there. So we're going to do the same thing that we normally do, which is we're going to read and annotate the new Zella. Um, and then we'll go through the first one as a class. And then you guys will do the same thing on the second. So my expectation is that you guys are highlighting the important passages. And we're adding at least three comments in um, about what we're reading. So you guys can go ahead and copy down my highlights and my comments for the first newsella, and then you'll do the same thing on your own for the second, okay? So we can go ahead and get started here in just a second. Okay. So if we take a look at this newsella, it says an overview of U.S. westward expansion. And we see here, this is a Fort, Fort Laramie, as it looked before 1840, in painting from memory by Alfred Jacob Miller in 1858 to 1860. Fort Laramie lay at the crossroads of an old North-South Native American trail and what became known as the Oregon Trail. It was called Fort Laramie because of a nearby, nearby Laramie Mountains, originally established as a private fur trading fort in 1834, Fort Laramie became the largest military post on the Northern Plains before its abandonment in 1890. It witnessed the entire saga of the Americas' westward expansion and Native American resistance to the expansion into their territories. So Fort Laramie was a really important stopping point along the Oregon Trail, so where the settlers could resupply, um, get some medical attention, and fix their wagons as they were moving westward. And these forts were really crucial. You guys will remember when we were playing the game Oregon Trail, as you move across, um, you're going to stop at these forts as trading posts, as places to kind of rest and recoup. And they're going to be the places where the United States Army is leading expeditions against the American Indians in the plains. All right, so let's get started. So remember, you guys are going to highlight with me as we go along, and you'll add in at least three comments. So we'll do that together. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson purchased the territory of Louisiana from France for $15 million. The Louisiana Purchase stretched from the Mississippi River to the Rocky Mountains and from Canada to New Orleans and the Gulf of Mexico. Altogether, this massive new territory doubled the size of the United States. To Jefferson, westward expansion incorporating new land to the west of the original eastern and southern states was key to the nation's health. He believed that a republic depended on an independent citizenry for its survival. For Jefferson, what made independence possible was land ownership, especially the ownership of small farms. The United States would have to continue to expand to provide enough land for its citizens. Okay, and this is really an important statement by Jefferson. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this one. Let's see if I can remember how to highlight. So we'll highlight, and we're going to add a comment in here. So if we remember back to one of our early units, the I'm going to put the citizen who owned land and farmed it was considered the ideal person for the Democratic Republicans. And so this is really an important part of their platform as a political party, is this idea that we are going to keep expanding. People have the ability to own farms, work those farms, and grow the crops for their family to live on. So you guys can go ahead, um, you're going to highlight the same place I did, and then add in the notes.
Westward expansion is one of the defining themes of 19th century American history. However, it is not just the story of Jefferson's expanding empire of liberty. On the contrary, in the six decades after the Louisiana Purchase, westward expansion nearly destroyed the United States. All right, so let's take a look at Manifest Destiny. By 1840, nearly 7 million Americans, 40% of the nation's population, lived in the West. Most had left their homes. Most had left their homes oops, in search of economic opportunity. Okay, so let's highlight this. This is also going to be another really important thing in U.S. history. So I'm going to write down financial panics in the eastern portions of the U.S. will lead to a vast migration of people. Okay, and this is really going to be the main reason that we see this expansion westward is because of all of these financial panics that we have um, happen in the United States. Like Thomas Jefferson, many of these pioneers associated westward migration, land ownership, and farming with freedom. In Europe, large numbers of factory workers formed a dependent and seemingly permanent working class. By contrast, in the United States, the western frontier offered the possibility of independence and the chance to make enough money to move up to a higher social class. So this is going to be a very important difference between Europe and the United States. In Europe, land ownership was pretty much impossible for anyone except for the aristocracy. So the most wealthy of people in Europe ended up owning land, but for the vast majority of people, other people, land ownership was not possible. And this really goes back to the mid Middle Ages where we had this um, serf serfdom, where people were essentially um, slaves to the land that the Lord owned and they would have to work it. And so it's really going to attract a lot of people to come to the United States because of this idea of land ownership. And people really associate owning land with being of a higher class. So it will help to drive immigration to the United States. In 1845, journalist John O'Sullivan put a name to the idea that helped many pioneers toward the western frontier. Westward migration was an essential part of the America as a nation, he argued, and it was America's manifest destiny, their clear and obvious destiny, to carry the great experiment of liberty to the edge of the continent. The survival of American freedom depended on it. Okay, so let's highlight that. And we'll put in a little note here. Manifest destiny means the clear and obvious destiny for the U.S. to expand to the Pacific. All right, the next section, westward expansion and slavery. Meanwhile, the question of whether slavery would be allowed in the United, in the new Western states shadowed every conversation about the frontier. In 1820, the Missouri Compromise attempted to resolve this question. It had admitted Missouri to the Union as a slave state and Maine as a free state. More importantly, it declared that in the future, slavery would be prohibited in all parts of the Louisiana Purchase north 
of the southern boundary of Missouri. However, the Missouri Compromise did not apply to new territories that were not part of the Louisiana Purchase, and so the issue of slavery continued to fester. Meanwhile, southern farmers grew more and more dependent on slave labor. Northern farmers grew increasingly resentful as many felt slaves gave southerners an unfair advantage that made it harder for them to earn a living. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight this whole second paragraph here. So this slave and free state issue will continue until the Civil War. And really, from the very beginning of the foundation of U the United States as a country, we see the issue of slavery being a very divisive issue. So a lot of people had different opinions about it, and it really is not going to be resolved until we have the Civil War, which will finally end this question of having slavery in the United States. It's going to finally end the evil that the United States was built on. All right, next section is Westward Expansion and the Mexican War. Despite the conflict over slavery, Americans kept migrating west in the years after the Missouri Compromise was adopted. Thousands crossed the Rockies to the Oregon Territory, which belonged to Great Britain, and thousands more moved into the Mexican territories of California, New Mexico, and Texas. In 1837, American settlers in Texas joined with Texans of Spanish origin, known as Tejanos, and won independence from Mexico. They petitioned to join the United States as a slave state. Texas's request was not immediately granted for fear it would upset the careful balance the Missouri Compromise had achieved. Then, in 1844, Southern cotton planter James K. Polk was elected president. Thanks to the maneuvering of Polk and his allies, Texas joined the Union as a slave state in February 1846. That same month, Polk declared war against Mexico, claiming falsely that the American Ar Mexican army had invaded our territory and shed American blood on American soil. The war proved to be relatively unpopular, partly because many Northerners objected to what they saw as a war to expand the slaveocracy. Westward Expansion and the Compromise of 1850 In 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended, ended the Mexican-American War and added more than 1 million square miles, an area larger than the Louisiana Purchase, to the United States. The addition of this land reopened the question of the Missouri Compromise had seemingly settled. Would slavery be allowed in the new American territories? After two years of increasingly heated debate, Kentucky Senator Henry Clay proposed another compromise. California would enter the Union as a free state. However, in the rest of the Mexican territory, the people who lived there would decide whether slavery would be allowed. And this is going to increasingly um, be a problem because it, this is going to end up upsetting the slave-free state balance. And this is going to be one of the factors that's going to lead us in about 10 years after this to the Civil War. Bleeding Kansas. In 1854, Illinois Senator Douglas a., Stephen A. Douglas proposed that two new states, Kansas and Nebraska, be established within the Louisiana Purchase Territory. Under the terms of the Missouri Compromise, slavery would not be permitted in either state because both were north of Missouri. However, Douglas's proposal allowed the settlers to decide for themselves whether their states would be sl slave or free. Northerners were outraged. 
Douglas, in their view, had caved to the demands of the slaveocracy and at their expense. Free soil settlers established a rival government against slave-owning settlers, and soon Kansas spiraled into civil war. Hundreds of people died in the fighting that became ensued, known as Bleeding Canvas, Kansas. And in many, many historians actually view this period of fighting in Kansas between the slave, um, slave owners and the abolitionists as the beginning of the Civil War. Um, but typically, we also view that 1860 with the election of Abraham Lincoln and the secession of um, South Carolina as the official start um, of the Civil War when the Confederate States of America is founded. But this um, bleeding Kansas is really the first start of fighting between the two sides. All right. A decade later, the Civil War in Kansas over slavery was followed by the nation's civil war over the same issue. The question of slavery in the West, a place that seemed to symbolize American freedom, ended up tearing the United States apart. Okay, so we can see here really the legacy of Manifest Destiny in um, a couple of really big ways, right? We have a huge expansion of the United States in the first 70 years after it was created. We have a long legacy of overtaking the American Indian's land and brutally subjugating those people. And we also see a final, a real legacy of um, our movement towards the Civil War as more territories are be made into states and really that political balance between slave and free states in the United States Senate is upset. And so those are some of the major legacies that we see in um, Manifest Destiny.